wormholes, particle physics, extra dimensions. Are the wonders of so-called reality really what they appear to be? Or do we exist in an elaborate hologram? Is our universe the result of random activity or the result of intelligent design? If a creator was involved, can we discover him through our perception of divine order? This is Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck. Hello and welcome to Into the Multiverse. I am your host, Josh Peck. Uh, sorry for the kind of long hiatus we've had without explanation. Uh, now, that kind of thing might actually happen from time to time, but let me explain why. For, for those of you who aren't aware of what's going on, my uh, six-year-old son, Nathan, has been diagnosed with leukemia. And he's... he's in recovery now, he's he's gonna he's gonna be fine. But but what that means is, from time to time, we might have to rush him to the hospital, and sometimes this can be for weeks on end. Uh, we're we're going to St. Jude's in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, for his treatment, and sometimes we just have to go there without any warning. Uh, so it's a, it's a long story. We talked about it more on uh, Chalk Talk. If you want the full episode uh, to really know what's going on, you can go back uh, on the Chalk Talk YouTube channel and watch that. It's a show that I host with uh, Donna Howell. And the whole explanation is there, but just for our purposes here, I wanted to just briefly mention what was going on. So while we try to provide content to you every week, uh, now because of this, that's not going to always be possible, but we'll try to do everything that we can. So if there is another long hiatus like that, it doesn't mean the show has been canceled or anything like that. It just means that likely... Uh, I've had to take Nathan to the hospital again. So uh, if you follow me online, you'll be able to get updates about that kind of stuff if it happens. So you can find me on uh, Facebook is probably the best way to go. Also, um, Nathan's mom, my wife, Christina Peck, she started a Facebook uh, group called Nathan's Journey. Uh, and you can follow updates there if you choose to. Uh, so th those are all the places you can go. Al also, if you care to help donate, the best place to go, because uh, people have been asking, is dailyrenegade.com slash donate. That's my personal um, website, and that's where all, all the donations that come through there go to Nathan. So uh, that, would be, that would be greatly appreciated. And again, the whole, the whole story is on Chalk Talk right now. You can go and find that if you want to, if you want to watch that. Okay, but we have uh, some science things to talk about today because, once again, scientists are making some strange claims that conflict with um, really just the idea of God. You know, they're always looking for some other explanation of life instead of God. It can't be God. It has to be something natural. It has to be something material. And so they'll, they'll go to great lengths to do this. Sometimes they'll involve uh, parallel universes, extra dimensions. They'll involve time before time. They'll involve uh, saying things such as n nothing is really something. Uh, you know, th they have to go through these odd paradoxes in order to, to bolster this claim that all of creation, and, and especially life, happened without a creator, without God. Uh, and why do they do this? Because if they admit that there's a God, then they have to admit that they're accountable to this God, and it means they're not going to be able to do everything they want to do. So uh, this, is, this story today is just one of many attempts, uh, all throughout time really, that, uh, that, that tries to force this, this view on everybody else. So this time they're saying that radiation fr from black holes may create life. This comes from futurism.com. Uh, it says, in the hunt for alien life, scientists often focus on the Goldilocks zone, the region around a star where the temperature would be just right for liquid water to exist on an orbiting planet's surface. That's another thing, too. They're always looking for liquid water. They know water is essential for life, so the assumption is if they find water, then that's an indication that life exists. But there are a lot of things that are essential for life, not just water. And also, that's only human life, provided that there was uh, some type of intelligent life out there who's to say that they wouldn't survive on something else? Why water? Just because it works that way on Earth doesn't mean it would work that way on every other planet. But again, they're trying to explain not only life on other planets, but life on this planet. They're trying to explain how life originated on Earth without a God. And we know that life on this planet requires water, 
So they have to try to explain that on other planets as well. Uh, and that's what leads to this Goldilocks thing. And, and if, you're more, if you're interested in more information about that uh, exoplanets and the, the quest for alien life and how this, this quest actually has some occultic origins, you can check out uh, me and Derek Gilbert's book, The Day the Earth Stands Still. You can find that at skywatchtvstore.com. Make sure you check that out. Um, but it, the article continues, but now a team from Harvard University is suggesting there's another kind of Goldilocks zone we should continue, con, con, consider excuse me, in our hunt for alien life. And instead of having a star at its center, it has a supermassive black hole. Supermassive black holes are surrounded by swirling disks, disks of gas and dust called active galactic nuclei, or AGN. Uh, those of you who followed the show will be familiar with that term because we've talked about it quite a bit. We've done several episodes on black holes and even the idea of white holes. These disks emit incredible amounts of radiation and light, and many researchers assume this radiation would destroy the atmospheres of any nearby planets, creating a dead zone around the black hole. But now, the researchers behind this new Harvard study, which was published in the Astrophysical Journal, are challenging that assumption. Uh, here's a quote from Manasvi Lingam, and uh, this is a quote from uh, Live Science, quote, people have mostly been talking about the detrimental effects of black holes. We wanted to re-examine how detrimental the radiation is and ask ourselves if there were any positives. Uh, it, it's kind of like this, this um, mutation question. You know, there are scientists that'll say that over great periods of time, mutation after mutation resulted in uh, benefits for organisms. However, no mutation has been observed to be a benefit. There are mutations for various things. There have been frogs born with extra limbs. They're, they're not positive. They're, they're a detriment. Any mutation is uh, a net negative to an organism, and not one has been observed to be beneficial. But they, they have to say those things types of things to make current models of Darwinian evolution work. So they're, they're doing the same type of thing here. You know, could, could, could radiation, could the, the, the Hawking radiation emitted from a black hole actually be a positive? I doubt it. But in order for this theory or this hypothesis to work, they would need that to be the case. So it says, uh, to do that, the researchers created computer models of AGNs, and using them, they were able to identify galactic Goldilocks zones surrounding black holes. If positioned within this re region, they would write in, uh, they write in their study, a planet's atmosphere would remain intact while the AGN's radiation could break its molecules into life-supporting compounds. The light from the AGN, meanwhile, could facilitate photosynthesis. Well... A, a star could do that too. Why go to the great lengths of showing how a, a black hole might, in some reality, uh, create create life or or, or uh, give, give life the essentials that it needs when we already know that the sun, that stars, can do that? Uh, because they've searched the stars and they are looking for planets and they found no life. So now they're thinking, well, if it's if maybe. If black holes can do it, maybe that's why we haven't seen it, because we can't observe, uh, or at least not until very recently, have we been able to observe a black hole or anything around it. And even the observations that we have today are very limited. Um, so it says, the team also revisited the assumed negative effects of AGN radiation on a nearby planet and concluded that they've been greatly exaggerated. While previous studies suggested that the damaging effects of a black hole the size of the Milky Way's Sagittarius A would strip away the atmosphere of any Earth-like planet within 3,200 light years, they think the damage would end at a distance of just 100 light years. Lingham told Live, Live Science, quote, looking at what we know about Earth, it does suggest that maybe the positive effects seem to be extended over a larger region than the negative effect, uh, uh, than the negative effect, excuse me. This was definitely surprising, end quote. Uh, so, of course, for this hypothesis to work, they need all of these uh, really weird externalities to, to be in place as well. So there's a lot of guesses, a lot of hypotheses, a lot of speculation without any direct evidence, without any direct observation. Uh, and, you know, that, that, that's why they create these theories in the first place, because they would say the same thing about God. You know, you, there's, there's no direct evidence, there's no direct... Um, uh, there's, there, there's nothing that you can look at to prove God in a scientific manner. But that, that's because 
science is based in the material world. It's based on the effect of creation and not the supernatural cause of creation. Uh, Science is within the realm of physicality, and of course, God does not fit within that box. But they, many of them, tend to think that everything fits in that box because the universe fits in it, because physical reality fits in that box. So all of the answers must fit there too, but that's not the case. Think about, you know, the classic example of the watch. Just because you have a watch doesn't mean that every explanation about that watch is going to be found in that watch. You know, you're, you're, you, you're, you're not going to know much about the watchmaker. If he inscribes his name on it, you might learn his name. You might learn a little bit about him. But you're not going to learn about his life, his family, the outside world in general. You've got to look outside of the watch for those answers. Same here. Uh, in, in order to know about God or even if there is a God, then you have to look outside of physical reality. Now, thankfully, we have a God that injects himself into physical reality and uh, attempts to make to, to, to give us evidence, attempts to give us answers and have a relationship with us. But he doesn't force any of us into it. We have to make that choice. We're not forced. So when we go on that journey, and if, if we decide to follow Jesus Christ, we do discover that there is a relationship that can be developed there. Uh, there, there absolutely is. And then all the evidence that, that we want is made available, yet still, because it's a personal relationship and because we don't worship a, a, a forceful God who's going to force his creation to love him and follow him. Because of that, the, the evidence must be kept subjective. So it's, you know, the, the evidence that I would pr- be able to provide to somebody is not material or physical. It's subjective. It's something inside. And that's not really scientific evidence. So is there scientific evidence? Uh, oh, well, I should say that's not scientific proof. There's certainly scientific evidence of God, or at least interpretations of established scientific facts. Uh, but there's there you, you you would not be able to say there is scientific proof of God, and that's fine because God should not be able to uh, fit inside that scientific box anyway. So when scientists look to black holes for the answer, or uh, or a time before time, or or nothing is something, when they look to those things for answers, they're staying within that box of physicality, of material science. That is a problem that is incredibly limiting, and that is why science in a lot of ways is, is, uh, is failing in the realms of trying to explain the unexplainable. Science is great, materialistic science has to be kept in that box, but it, scientists should not then try to venture outside of it and explain things like God or explain uh, how, you know, th- th- there's no sense in believing God. I mean, you know, you, you listen to five minutes of Lawrence Krauss and you realize, man, this guy has a bias, you know. He's a physicist, yet he's saying things like religion has offered nothing to the world. Uh, and and that's, where you, that's where you get when you take that line of thought to the extreme. When, when you stay within your materialistic box, you don't want to venture outside of it, and you cannot possibly consider that there might be something outside of the box. To many scientists and physicists uh, of all kinds, and biologists, any kind of scientist, to many of these people, anything that is, is within that box that we find ourselves in. I think that's limiting. I think that's wrong. But As always, I want to know what you have to say. I want to know what you think. What's your opinion of this whole matter? Please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Please subscribe to this channel. Um, I used to say that you will get a new episode of Into the Multiverse every Thursday morning at 9 a.m., but I can't promise that it will be every Thursday. It will be Thursdays at 9 a.m., but I can't promise it's going to be every single Thursday. So we're going to do the best we can. Uh, And if you could, just on a personal note, please keep uh, me and my family, and especially Nathan, in prayer. That would be uh, very very, very much appreciated. Thank you all for joining me on this episode of Into the Multiverse. I'm excited to read what you have to say in the comments section. Until next time, take care and God bless. I intend to share undisclosed facts that are stranger and scarier than most people can comprehend, and it is going to shake the public to the bone. And yes, this involves a cover-up of the highest order by national space agencies, including NASA. The 
asteroid is 100% certain to strike Earth, according to one space expert who says this is a matter of life and death. You'd probably have millions of casualties. Is a planet-killing asteroid a possibility? NASA has determined that the threat is real. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And many men died of the waters. Chief technology experts and working scientists agree with me. But what's more concerning is that this was prophesied in the Bible for the end times. NASA, Donald Trump, and a cosmic cover-up of end times proportions. Skywatch TV is proud to announce the largest giveaway of the year, the Project Wormwood Grand Giveaway. When you order Dr. Thomas Horn's new book, The Wormwood Prophecy, from the Skywatch TV store, you'll also receive on DVD the entire four-part Skywatch TV series on the Wormwood Prophecy featuring Dr. Thomas Horn and Derek and Sharon Gilbert. But we're just getting started. You'll also receive the never before released Best of Defender Publishing ebook collection on Data Disc, featuring 70 of the most information packed best selling books in Defender history. These full length works are in popular ebook formats so you can read them on EPUB, PDF, Kindle, and other handheld electronic devices. Give this collection as the ultimate gift to somebody you know this holiday season or take them with you wherever you go. Valued at over $700 all by itself. But that's not all. With the holidays just around the corner, now's your chance to save big and receive a massive collection of merchandise. Also included in the Wormwood Grand Giveaway is a gargantuan supply of brand new super quality overstock gift books, DVDs, audio sets, survival and organic living books to add to your library or to give away as gifts this holiday season. Sold separately, these items hold a retail value of over $900. Yours now for your donation of only $35 plus shipping and handling. This is the largest giveaway of the year and will be available only while supplies last, so don't delay. The Project Wormwood Grand Giveaway, available now at skywatchtvstore.com. Order now or call 1-844-750-4985.